We will just wait one more minute and then we will get started. All right, let's get started. Well, welcome everybody. I am Michelle Flood, the principal of Rogers School. And um, just wanna start by saying we have adored having your fourth grader, oh, soon to be fifth grader in our building this year. And it's just been a great group um, and we cannot wait to work with them for the next two years. Um, so I wanted to make sure I started with that. Um, some of you who are just entering, I also wanna let you know that we are recording this. Uh, for new entrants that may join us in the district in the next few months, as well as people who may not have been able to make it or um, as a reference to you down the road. Um, I also have two uh, staff members with me tonight, which I want to introduce. Um, I'll, uh, I have Chelsea Ditus with me. Uh, she is, as you probably know the name, she is our fourth grade counselor who will be graduating to fifth grade along with your children. So she has gotten to know them well. Um, and uh, we'll be moving with them and helping them navigate the transition as well as the rest of their career at Rogers. And she will take over during part of the presentation. And we also have Christina Bajardi. Christina is one of our teachers here and she brings a really unique insight to our meeting because she's taught both fourth and fifth grade. Um, she's currently in fifth grade. So um, she will talk a little bit about the content tonight and of course be able to answer questions from the teacher lens. So thank you, Christina and Chelsea for joining me tonight. And um, I'd like to get started before I start with my panic of trying to get the PowerPoint up. So um, that is always the moment of truth. But I want to just start by saying thank you to the parents that are here tonight, first of all, for taking the time to join us at this very late time of the year. Um, but we did want to make sure we took time to help and share with you information about the transition to fifth grade um, in what we hope is a more um, normal school year. And also, um, really just another opportunity to connect and um, thank you for what you've done this year. I think that's such a big piece that I can't say that enough. Um, the partnership with families, um, it took everybody as we all know to open, remain open and then even um, navigate our one little <laughs> blip in fourth grade. Some of you went through that with us right in September um, when we did have to quarantine one class. But um, you know, your flexibility this year has been tremendous. Um, your patience as we waited for guidance from the state and then how the district was going to interpret that and then get that information out to you um, was just most appreciated. And then, of course, um, your support of your, ch your children, first of all, and then the staff has been tremendous. So um, we know that it took the staff, the community, the families, um, everybody together to make it through this this year. And um, we just thank you for that. Um, and then, of course, you know, we honor the resiliency of the kids who just um, they didn't know what Rogers could be, but we do, um, <laughs> we had, they had a unique year, but we know that um, they've got a lot of opportunities coming up. So um, we've just, we've just been grateful for everything that you've done and supported us. Um, what I'm going to do is get this PowerPoint, as I said, the moment of truth, since we fully reopened, I haven't used Zoom as much. And let me just, let's see, hang on one second, of course. Ooh. Well, let's see, it is not, oh, I might have to have one of the others help me. I'm not seeing it in my, Christina or Chelsea, can you pull it up by any chance? Yeah, let me see if, sorry about that. Are we looking at my screen? Oh, perfect. That's why I bring them along. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Ditus. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> we'll, let you, we'll let you run that, so. Um, okay. I did pull it off in the fifth grade meeting yesterday, or the fourth grade meeting yesterday, but sorry about that. Um, so you can go ahead to the next screen. So tonight our agenda will be, uh, we're just jump down to number three really already. We're going to talk a little bit to start with the comparison between fourth and fifth grade. Um, and it's 
obviously there's some similarities because of our structure and but lots of differences because we expect to open a little bit more. Um, the curriculum review will be, um, will give you a sense of what happens in the content areas. And again, Christine will give you specifics. We'll talk about some of the extracurricular opportunities that we are really looking forward to offering the children. And then Chelsea has some information from her lens as the counselor. Um, we are, as I've mentioned a couple of times, going to present as if we're opening in a typical year. Um, and then what we will do is adjust if we need to. Um, things obviously, as you know, in the community and the state are looking great. Um, so we're excited about that, but we will have to wait for guidance documents on that. The other piece I wanna mention, thank you, Mrs. Bajardi is running our chat there. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to put them in the chat and then um, whoever's not speaking, will try to manage that. And then we will either answer it as we go or we'll make sure to address those questions at the end. We also plan to stay on the Zoom at the end if anyone has questions. Um, so don't feel uh, shy about asking anything. Okay, Ms. Ditus, I'll turn it over to you for the next slide. For those who don't know me, um, whether we've talked on the phone or met in person or email, I am the fourth grade school counselor, Ms. Ditus, and I will be transitioning with the fourth grade students to fifth grade. Um, so first I'd like to talk about the differences between fourth and fifth grade, some things that the students may be looking forward to. Um, is that they will hopefully have lockers next year, which will be new to them from this year. Um, students can purchase their own lock to bring to Rogers or the school can give them their lock. Um, that is to keep all their belongings safe throughout the day. Um, so they will be expected to go to their locker in the morning to put their stuff in there, bring all their belongings for the day um, and they can check in for like lunchtime. Um, but besides that, they'll go to their locker at the end of the day. So they will not be going um, to their locker through every period, but just through those main times throughout the day. Mrs. Ditus, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. We're having a little trouble hearing from you and a couple of people are also putting that in the um, chat. So I thought maybe it was just me. Oh no, can you hear me now? Not great. Huh. I haven't had microphone problems okay. lately. Let's just see if any um, possible suggestion when you go over to your mute, your up arrow, um, possibly your microphone. You Can you phone. hear me now? Same. Sounds distant, but it wasn't when we were on earlier. Right. Maybe Miss Blood, if you and I mute and give her the Oh, okay. Let's form. try that again. Okay, how about now? Is this a little bit better? A little bit better? Okay, I'll speak up. <laughs> so um, lockers, as I was saying, lockers will be a part of the transition th um, next year. Um, so they'll be expected to go in the morning and after school and bring their belongings with them. Um, transitions to different classrooms will be something new to fifth graders. That's typically new to fifth grade from fourth grade, um, but the fifth graders this year were not able to do so. Um, so the day will be split up into two blocks, a humanities blocks, which will entail social studies and English, um, and then another block, which will be math, science, and technology. So they will have two different teachers, um, one for that humanities block and one for that math and science block. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about those teachers and blocks as we go on. And then they will also be receiving um, specials, art, music, and physical education hopefully throughout the whole year um, as this year with COVID, it was split up. And if I can just add on, thank you, Mrs. Ditus. We could hear you much better there. Um, I just wanna add on there that this, obviously the children were only in their classrooms this year due to COVID. So we do anticipate using the art room, using the music room, using the gymnasium, uh, using the lunchroom. So that will be a change for the kids. Normally I would never have to mention that, but this year um, they will get out of that classroom a little bit more. So we're excited about that um, as well. Um, and just uh, something I wanna mention for families that have been through fifth and sixth grade, you've probably noticed there is a bit of a difference there that the children will have two teachers similar to what many of the fourth graders have had this year um, because we are shifting to that humanities and really a STEAM block, if you will. And we're really excited about this change because we know that's really developmentally when we have historically put the children in um, a different math teacher, a different science teacher, a different social science teacher, a different ELA teacher, they are moving every 42 minutes here. And that has been great for some kids, but also a lot for others. So we feel like this is really um, 
kind of matching where they're developmentally, um, where they are, as well as giving them a little more structure throughout the day and a little more stability um, and consistency rather than constantly moving around and seeing different teachers. So this is gonna be something new. Your children will be the first one to take this approach in a long time here in West Irondequay. Um, Iroquois and Rogers are making this transition together. Um, and we're really excited for the opportunities um, that our teachers are gonna embrace this summer and start working on and then um, what it will look like for your children this year. And so that's in progress and teachers will be able to talk a lot more about that in um, the September, October orientation. Thank you. So what to expect for fifth grade? Um, as we go fourth grading into fifth grade, a new level of independence is required um, and expected of the students. And a big piece of that is the organization. Um, so something that you can do leading up to fifth grade to help with that organization um, is getting the supplies that are um, required for the classes and that teachers feel are necessary um, to stay organized and succeed within the classroom. Um, and then also having that, um, also having that, um, having the correct materials when you go from class to class. Um, so that's bringing them to each school each day, remembering them from your locker. Um, so having that piece of organization as well. Another expectation that will change from fourth to fifth grade is the homework piece. Um, on average, students will have 45 to 60 minutes of homework a night. Um, so something that will stay similar from fourth grade is the reading each night, um, reading a novel. Um, so they'll be expected to read a certain amount of pages per week um, to keep up with the novel that will be an English class. Um, something new in fifth grade will be a math assignment for homework Monday through Thursday night um, that they will be expected to for grading. Um, lastly, another expectation is self-advocacy. If they're not understanding an assignment or need help on something, um, advocating for themselves to their teachers that they are not understanding it to get the best out of their learning experience. Um, so as we touched before, the student schedules will be in those two blocks, the humanities and the STEAM block. Um, they will have two teachers similar to this year for each of those content areas, and then the four special area teachers. Um, lunch, hopefully, will be back in the cafeteria, so lunch will look different than this year being in the classrooms. Um, with that, they'll be um, learning how to use the lunch line, how to check out at lunch, and then also the famous snack bar that all of the students are really excited to have next year. And that is bringing, um, bringing in your own money for two snacks per day, um, like such as ice cream and fruit roll-ups that they can get during those snack times. Um, and then their activity time, their recess, again, they'll be going outside as much as possible like they did this year. Um, if they are staying inside, it is a little bit different th than what it looked like this year. They could go to the gym um, for the recess time in the PE area or a quiet classroom um, where maybe they need to make up some work or work on classroom or just want that quiet area. So that is something that will be new and I think very exciting for lots of our fourth graders. We do a plan on, this is another change if you've had older children going through Rogers. Um, this year we were outside as much as we could be throughout the winter and historically we hadn't done that here. Um, and so we are hoping to keep that. We found it, the kids loved being out there. Um, their block of time is shorter, obviously, than the K-3 buildings, but we would like to keep that as much as we can, um, as well as use the classrooms um, in the gym, the gym when it's available. It's not always available during lunch periods, um, mm -hmm. so it will depend on how the schedule works out. The other point, I doesn't really go with schedules, but it made me think of it as we were talking about the cafeteria. The one thing that will likely go away from many of the fifth graders is the snack time, um, because fourth grade often had a late lunch. There, they had a snack mid-morning. As the lunch moves earlier in fifth or sixth grade, we don't need the snack because it's kind of placed a little bit more um, balanced in the day. So uh, if they do have a late lunch, of course, teachers will accommodate that, but it may not be necessary. Thank you. Next, we'll be talking about um, curriculum. Okay, I will take over there. And if you can go right to the next one, Ms. Ditus. So the thing we wanna really start with um, before we get into the nitty gritty about math, science and social studies is really our ultimate goal of building a community here at Rogers. Um, harder this year, so we have really classroom communities um, because people have been so isolated and we haven't been able to bring the kids together for assemblies 
or in the cafeteria or for clubs as much. Um, but next year we plan to go back full force to really build the larger community um, as well as individual classroom communities. And really our goal in that is we want every child here to feel welcome. We want every child to have a sense of belonging in this school and feel pride in their school, as well as of course be supported and appropriately challenged um, as they work through their academics. So the way we really, and in, in every year we come up with new ideas, but these are some of the basic ones that we have been doing over the last few years, really to try to build that sense of community. Um, it's in the classrooms, as I mentioned, um, with special events um, within the school, it may be um, clubs. That's another opportunity for different kids to come together with common interests. Um, those assemblies I mentioned, we have spirit assemblies. Uh, we have assemblies where we bring high school students back to talk to the kids who sat right where these kids sit um, and tell them about their course. Um, and they usually encourage them to get involved in different activities um, or how something at Rogers has stayed with them over time. Uh, we have a variety of recognition programs. Maybe your student was a student of the month or have gotten a kindness award or a character award. Um, so all those help to build that community, share um, our values as a community and then recognize those. Um, classroom circles, the fourth grade team, you know, many of the teachers use classroom circles or morning meetings. Um, to really build community, to build relationships among the students, as well as, of course, build relationships student-teacher. So it's all those pieces, student to student, student to teacher, and then, of course, teacher to teacher within our building or staff member to staff member. Um, School-wide circles, we did this, um, Ms. Ditus isn't familiar with this because she's new to us this year, but Mrs. Bajardi and I worked on a project last year where we really tried to start to say, let's not just look at the fourth graders separate from fifth graders and sixth grade, but how do we start to get the kids in four, five, six to mix a little bit? So our fifth and sixth graders can be role models. Our fourth graders maybe just get to know a few more people and not feel intimidated by a sixth grader. Um, so we had multi-grade level meeting for circles. And we really found that a neat experience and um, heard good things from the kids about them. So we anticipate going back to something like that. They were once a month or once every two months um, with some neat, books might have been sparking it or a small teamwork project. Um, restorative practices are something the district has really been working on the last couple years and we've all as educators been um, educating ourselves and learning more about it and practicing using them. And that's really where when we are faced with challenges or perhaps a misstep or a mistake or a poor choice, it's really recognizing that, admitting it, um, thinking about what else could I have done differently. It's taking responsibility and then making amends. Um, and then we talk about ways to make amends, whether that's a conversation, that's an apology note, it's changing our behaviors. Um, so that is really, teachers are embracing that. We are, um, Ms. Ditus does a lot of work around that when she's helping kids problem solve. Um, so that will continue as a focus area here and really across the district. Uh, team building, I already kind of highlighted, but the counselors, are, well, um, as well as this cool wide community events, we may have a team building exercise we had um, Oh, what do you call those rooms where you try breakout rooms or what was that, Mrs. Bajardi, where they people go in the rooms. rooms? What are they called? Deep rooms. I can sorry. Yeah, I think you all know what I'm talking about, where you get locked in a room and you have to solve problems to get out, whatever that's called. So we did one of the oh escape rooms. Thank you, Ms. Bajardi. I could hear you saying rooms. So escape rooms. Um, I'm aging myself here that I can't think of these things. Uh, but we did one of those one year. So different types of things like that to build community, build you know um, excitement and um, engagement in our school. And then finally, um, always trying to be mindful of student voice and choice. Um, we have typically in the past had a principal's advisory committee. That's where representatives from each homeroom will come together, share ideas. What do you like in the school? What's going well in the, in the school? What are some suggestions you have for us? Um, we didn't get to do that this year again, because we weren't mixing cohorts for a long time. But kids, which I love it about them, they're not afraid to send me a petition or things like that when they have an idea about something. So one idea that came, um, you'll see the, the kids up here, there's some fourth graders, maybe some of your children right there. Um, they had talked about wanting to do something on Halloween. They typically have um, dressed up in K-3 buildings and it was never a practice here at Rogers. Um, some of the kids made a great argument for it. We said, let's try it. Uh, the kids made the flyer for it. We passed them out. So, you know, that's again, listening to the kids' ideas and giving them a sense of ownership over their school. So hence, um, we dressed up for Halloween today and they use characters, or not today, this year. Um, and we anticipate that continuing. Down below, you see that's a fifth grade class this year, um, engaging in a morning circle. 
And I love the picture just because you can see everybody facing one direction in that, really looking at the speaker. And it's such a neat piece when I get to sit in on a circle or observe one that just the sense of respect that goes on in these and listening to each other and taking turns and responding to one another. Uh, we call that active listening. And I think um, the kids do a beautiful job with that. So Mrs. Bajardi probably can speak to some of that as she gets in here. So we just think, you know, that's a little bit of a, a snapshot of really that whole picture that we try to do here in addition to all those academic areas. Mrs. Bajardi, is there anything you'd wanna add from that one? Um, no, I don't think so. I think you kind of hit a lot of those high points, but really what we're trying to do is get kids um, academically, socially, emotionally invested in their education and their friends um, and building themselves and their community. Thank you. We're ready for the next slide. So the curriculum would just give you a quick overview. Again, I don't want to go too um, in depth with this. I want to be uh, recognizing that it is June, late June, um, and the teachers will certainly give you more information in the fall. But um, for our humanities block, uh, Mrs. Bajardi, I'm going to take over because the vacuum is starting in the hallway. So I'll let you talk a little bit about that while I shut my door. Yeah, sure. No problem. So in ELA in um, fifth grade, we kind of, it's almost like a level up from fourth grade. So we start with a whole group novel study um, and then start breaking up into what we call book clubs. So out of a confined list of maybe 10 or so books, um, kids will have a book tasting where they can kind of read the first chapter or so a whole bunch of books and choose one that speaks to them and their interests. And then we just form little book clubs, just like adult book clubs. There's um, time limits on how many pages you need to read a night. And then we have discussions and do projects. Like right now, the kids in fifth grade are, um, kids in the book club are making a game board. So they picked out events from the book, positive and negative, and those are the move ahead this many spaces, move back this many spaces. Um, we really try to insert as much um, SEL work, um, social emotional learning work, cultural responsive education work within um, those frameworks. Um, and as for writing, um, we do a lot of just smaller writing bits with the bigger projects. There's a personal memoir we do at the beginning of the year, and that's a great way to get to know each other as well. Um, and also a fable that kids really have a good time with because it's fun and creative and you can make up silly animals and silly situations. So the kids really do enjoy that. And we like to infuse a lot of technology as well into those projects, um, PowerPoint, Word, editing, that type of thing. Thank you, Mrs. Bajari, for taking yeah. it there. Um, and of then, course. And I really do want to compliment, I think your, your children will really enjoy this, Mrs. Bajardi and her colleagues, the novel study and book club that she's talking about. Fifth grade team has just really taken off with this and um, they themselves are reading all kinds of children's literature to really give and then asking me to order them. And there's one thing I love buying for them, it's books. Um, so really just getting books that are, are relevant, are timely and really engaging for our students. And um, this year we highlighted some of our students at a board of education meeting in their book clubs. And it really has just been really impressive how energized the kids are. Um, one thing that they're doing now is they're making what they're calling a digital bookshelf or bookcase. Um, and kids are putting on this bookcase all the titles on the computer that they've read and then tallying the total number. And it's just been phenomenal to see how much children have read this year with this um, focus on really of enjoying books um, and talking about books and talking about how they relate to our life. So um, just a real credit to our fifth grade team. Not that our fourth grade teachers aren't doing that, but um, you know, they, they are able to hone in on that a little bit more in fifth grade and just making great strides. So your children will certainly benefit from that next year. Okay, Mrs. Ditus, or Ms. Ditus, sorry. Um, so mathematics, um, it's gonna be a continuation. The West Arundaquai District uses a spiral curriculum. Um, so the big focus here on that first bullet is conceptual understanding. And that's really understanding the concepts, what they mean, how we use them and why they matter in life. Um, and then of course the procedures that go along with it when we think of how many of us learned long division and those, those rituals and routines and, and um, procedural pieces but so much emphasis is also on understanding the why behind the procedure you're doing, and that's your conceptual understanding. Um, there's typical strands, very similar to, they're not any different than New York State has set these strands um, across all the band levels, and then they're just developed at a, a more sophisticated level with new, um, new layers of the concepts added. Um, I know fractions is a big one, Ms. Bajardi, that they spend a lot of time in fifth grade on. I don't know if there's any <laughs> other things you yeah, I would say the biggest ones are fractions and decimals and using those 
in really all the operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, um, and also in some spatial things in geometry and that type of thing. So yeah, fractions and decimals are the biggies. Um, I hope there's no parents over there wincing at that. It's not as scary as it sounds. Um, there's also some beginning of some algebra that really gets kids ready for sixth grade curriculum as well. Um, and again, the kids think, which your kids come home after algebra, they think they are just the smartest people on the face of the earth. And it's really fun to watch. Um, so that's some great things to look forward to there. But just like Ms. Flood said, we want to develop the skills and also the knowledge base. And that's really where we want those two things to come together. So kids are really critical, deep thinkers in math. Great, thank you. And I always like to give the plug this time of year to say anything you can do to help them do a little math over the summer, whether it's focusing on telling time, it's using the money or it's converting the money to a decimal to, you know, anything you can do to just plug those in real life opportunities that is very helpful to keep them a little bit, um, to keep those mathematic minds going. Um, and I was a fourth grade teacher for 19 years, so I cannot say enough how much those math facts um, will help them if they continue to work on those times tables. Um, yes, there's a lot of ways to figure it out in your hand and use charts and things like that. But if they know that piece, it takes that, comp that just that little bit of stressor out when they're trying to now use the decimals or they're trying to find a common denominator. So I'm just gonna give that old fourth grade teacher plug um, that, that'll help them considerably if they, and, and the other thing I try to do, if you get out a times table chart, you know, have them highlight the ones they know, because a lot of times they think they don't know any of them, but they know the ones, they know the twos, they know the threes, they know the fours, they know the fives. And then when you get to the six, seven, eights, you already know half of them, because you know the lower end of it, nine times three, you know, nine times two. So, you know, when they start to highlight, oh, these are the only ones I really need to concentrate on, it's a little less of a daunting task. So just thought I- There's lots of fun ways to practice too. Going to the dollar store, getting those old old school flashcards, but playing games with them, like playing war with them. Whoever has the highest product gets that pair. Things like that, just to make it fun, you know, not so um, school like over the summer, and then really create that buy-in for your kids. I think that would be um, helpful for them for sure. The math facts are very helpful when they start thinking higher level in fifth and sixth grade. This one is um, a newer slide that we added this year. And I, I just highlighted these because New York State has set aside practices and almost like the thinking skills that go with math or science or social studies. So we added those slides this year um, because if you take a look at these, these, as I mentioned, are the thinking skills. And they're so common when you look at what kinds of thinking we're doing in, in social studies or in science to what we're doing in math. We're making sense of problems. If it's social studies, we're making sense of information. Um, constructing an argument critiquing the reasoning of others. Those go across that, you know, let's look at this scientist's hypothesis. Is that similar? So if, what we really like to point out to the parents is these are that we're trying to really help your children develop that critical thinking and their general thinking skills. Um, modeling with math means showing how I did it. My, you know, giving that the process, the credit. Um, so we just wanted to kind of highlight this to say, you know, we're not just worried about geometry or not just worried about fractions, but it's the thinking that relates to that. And you'll see that common thread. Um, I think that's one of the great things New York State has kind of added to their curriculum. Um, and I'll, I'll highlight a few where you'll see commonalities as we move to um, the other content areas. All right, I think social studies is up next. Um, social studies now, as I mentioned, we'll roll this into the humanities block. Um, so we are gonna have a social studies expert teacher next year who will push into the English language arts class so that really during that part of the humanities block, two teachers will be working with the children, which we are, we are really excited about. Um, so they'll have a social studies expert and then the English teacher coming in. And it'll be a, it will probably in the beginning be separate, you know, it's social studies block here and then ELA block. But we see as these teachers have time to work together, the humanities coming through and we use one content to complement the other and to learn about the other. So Many of your fourth grade teachers, to be honest with you, are already thinking from this and planning different units and they probably sound a little familiar to you. Um, so your kids have had some of these experiences and we're really now pushing it up and deepening it. Um, the main focus of the fifth grade content is around studying of Western hemisphere and the cultures of Western hemisphere. And they typically compare different cultures and different regions, uh, looking at the geography, how the geography impacts people, um, how their, their history and the cause and effect relationships of their key events what government looks like, again, comparing different governments within the Western hemisphere, and then of course the economies of each. Um, so it's a pretty neat piece because even whatever you learn in September, you're still linking to the next, if you're learning about Canada, then you're learning about Mexico, then you're learning about United States. So 
Um, we think that's you know a really neat approach now. Um, again, we've got there we do the humanities approach and a lot of inquiry, um, asking questions, trying to learn about these cultures. Um, I taught social studies also for a while, so I do love that one. Ms. Bajardi, anything you want to add about the content there? No, I think that's really, um, you kind of hit the nail on the head. We said when we talk about even the early America, so we start by compare, well, learning about what is culture. And like you said, how does the environment affect culture and vice versa? Um, we go into the Aztec, the Inca, and the Mayas, and then fast forward through time um, to current day uh, Canada, US, Mexico, and Cuba. So that, the kids had a really nice time doing that, comparing those cultures, and the end, an end product was like a travel advertisement brochure um, for a certain country, and kids had a nice time doing that and presenting it to their friends. Um, so here are the social studies practices in the new framework. I shouldn't say new, it's been, been about five years now. Um, but these are those thinking skills that with, no matter what grade level and what unit, if you will, they're doing or what content they're studying, we're really working on gathering and interpreting. And again, here's the using evidence, just like in math. Um, chronological reasoning, causation, what, what caused what to happen, the whys, um, comparisons. And just like we just talked about in the cultures, we're making comparisons in math. What way did you solve it? How did I solve it? Um, what's similar about that? What's different? So um, like I said, this I, I just think this is so important because we're developing the thinker here, um, separate from just having them memorize content. Um, which, you know, this is going to be where we're going to get the bank for our buck as they move to sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Science, um, it is, uh, that's been evolving over the last few years. We have new units and new, um, new programs that we're using, and we really like a lot of hands-on inquiry. Um, the New York State, this is, um, I know you can't read this, but I put the picture on there because really over here on the left, are in the bottom are the practices that I was mentioning. Um, so they're taking a three-dimensional approach between engineering principles, cost-cutting concepts, and then those standards. So again, thinking like a scientist, what does that look like developing and using models? We heard that in math, um, asking questions, of course that's anywhere, um, any of the content, analyzing information, constructing an argument using evidence. So now we're doing it about science. So um, you really see that link across, we're gonna push their thinking no matter what class they're in, Key units that are typically done in uh, fifth grade are energy and an ecosystem. There will be a trip to the nature center as part of that one we anticipate. <laughs> um, interactions of the earth spheres, understanding matter, the sun, our stars and gravity, and then um, also of course hitting some New York state health standards. Mrs. Bajardi, anything special about science? I know they do microscopes. Yeah, and the most favorite part about science in fifth grade is the owl pellet. So we do dissect the owl pellets and that's part of um, a couple different cross cutting of those units. Um, and then one of our phenomena. So sometimes in these units, we anchor our learning into a phenomenon. Why does this happen in the world? So one of the phenomena we anchor in, in fifth grade is what happens to dead things over time? And we launch it with a picture of a deer on the side of the road. And then we talk about how matter decomposes and matter is not created nor destroyed and kind of go through that in many different realms. Um, and I think that's the kids are very engaged in that. And it's a different way of looking at things rather than let's learn the definition of matter and how, maybe some, maybe aging myself, but how I might've learned it um, 20 years ago or so. It's a lot different now. And it's really that critical lens, that critical thinking um, that we're trying to get kids ready for that 21st century that they will um, be a part of. Jared, I still remember the first time I walked into a science class from a couple of years ago and the poster on the wall was a critter on from the side of the road. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting visual. But then I went up and read all the post-it notes. Here's what I think first. Here's what I thought as I learned a little bit in the unit. And here's my final. So um, you, you knew the kids loved it, even though I was like, what is going on? So, uh, all right, technology. This will be very similar um, to what the children have been doing this year. Um, except a little more exciting. As you probably know from the communication we sent recently and teachers have been sending, the students' computers that they have right now will be being collected or are being collected now through next Wednesday. The teachers set different deadlines for when to bring them in. So what we would like, if you haven't seen that communication, the kids to have their computer and charger to return to school for us to keep over the summer. Um, the only children that should keep those are people who are participating in our ELA summer lab, our math summer lab or the tutoring programs or our special ed extended school year. 
Everybody else should turn those in. Um, and what we are going to do, very exciting, is the fifth graders get a brand new computer next year. So fifth grade is one of the years where they'll get a new computer and keep that for about four years until they're freshmen and then get another brand new one. So they will have the most up-to-date computers next year um, that the district has. So that, um, I don't know if they know that yet, you're welcome to share that piece with them. Um, and they'll get a new case too. So uh, you can do whatever you want with those cases. We don't reuse those. Um, so the, but the children, once they get their new one, they'll wanna keep that one for four years. So that's a little sidebar here, but um, so they, we do plan on most likely the children taking those computers home um, and bringing them back and forth to school like they are this year. We have found that before COVID, we did not do that at the four, six level, but the teachers and students are using them so much in so many positive ways that we don't want to shut that down. Um, some of the tools that they can use for home or if somebody's homesick, they can still access Schoology. So um, we anticipate that there will be a protection plan that families will be offered. I wanna say it's about 20 or $25 um, and we'll send that home uh, over the summer for people to take a look at and decide on um, if, they, if they do want their children to take it home. That's a, you know, a, nice, a nice option. Um, a lot of what we'll do is talk about those devices, um, how to keep the device safe itself, but more importantly, how to be safe and be secure on those devices. And that really goes to our bottom bullet um, as well. Um, when we think of social media, it's um, with the phones and the computers. Uh, what are you on? What should you be on? What's your digital footprint that you're creating? Um, so we know that there's a lot of, and that's going to be ongoing forever because of the digital world we are in, but we are seeing it lower and younger. Um, so we are very mindful of that. And, and our teachers will work on that next year. Our librarian will be wonderful. We expect to have our librarian back next year um, and um, our technology toast is in the district. So a lot of ways that we can wor work on helping children around dig digital citizenship, the logistics of using the computer um, and how to troubleshoot if you have it. Um, so that will all be kind of coming. And again, they'll get that new computer. Um, I just kind of highlight those last two bullets. Um, as more and more children get cell phones, younger, I know some of your children do not have them, um, but some of yours do, and we respect every family's choice. Uh, we have already, you know, had fourth graders um, learning to navigate chats or instant messaging or text messaging with one another in group messages. Um, so, you know, we will partner with you in that. That is um, a lot of time as they get to fifth and sixth grade is spent with us supporting them around their use of devices outside of school and how that ends up spilling into school. So um, anything you can do to support and monitor that we think is a great thing. Um, many, many use it positively and appropriate, but unfortunately, you know, just one turn on some kind of share or some kind of image um, can get a whole group a little bit off and we, we want everybody to be safe. Um, Ms. Ditus will be working on that and has already done some counseling around that this year. And um, that will be an ongoing piece with Ms. Ditus, Mrs. Cronin, um, our other counselor. Mrs. Ditus, anything you wanna add about that piece? Cause I know that's more your wheelhouse. Um, we'll talk, be, touch base about that in a little bit, but um, yeah, I think just having the importance of setting expectations um, for your student at home around the, their school computer and also other devices of what is expected and what's unexpected. Um, I think if we can have that relationship at school and at home, then um, the student is aware of what is appropriate. There we go. Alrighty. Um, this is another piece that has changed quite a bit um, or will change quite a bit for fourth to fifth grade. This will be the first year we, uh, um, take, we stop using the approaching standard, meeting standard, exceeding standard marking, and we go to a percentage. So students will earn a grade in each of their content areas um, and that will equate to a number grade then transfers to a letter grade. So the report card changes this year. Um, in a sense, it's got less information because you don't have the teacher narrative, but there are shorter comments. Teachers, of course, are always welcome to, welcome to talk to parents and give more details, um, but it doesn't have all those indicators, the fourth um, and the K3 one has, K4 one. Uh, we do use interims. You may receive one of those about halfway through the marking period. Those are usually on an ad needed basis. So if a teacher wants to comment on um, some growth of a child or some excellent work, they might send that home and note that or they may send one home saying missing assignments are impacting grades or grades are starting to slip or something like that. 
So that's just another way to communicate with families midway through. Um, please know that you can always be monitoring this on infant campus um, using the parent portal. So um, that is a way for you to always have eyes on um, how the kids are doing and whether they're turning things in on time or not. Um, so that becomes, I think, more important when you get to five and six because the fourth grade don't necessarily keep the report cards that way. So you can actually see the grade book and how your child is doing. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, I mentioned the parent portal. I think I've got all that. Um, homework does some, in some classes, it's counted as, you know, part of their grade because the teachers are grading that and using that. So there are, of course, some things just like classwork. Some are not graded, but equally important to build skills and give them practice. Other, other pieces are graded. Um, you know, we do want to, it is a big jump, I think, from four to five in the homework, especially as one of us said earlier, when they're reading a novel. So please be prepared for that transition. But if it seems um, unusual for your child or it's a big struggle, you know, reach out to the teachers, uh, reach out to counselors, and we can help navigate how to build them up so that they can build that stamina up. All right, Ms. Uh, the next one, we got some pictures of our darlings here. I probably recognize some of your children. Um, so doing, this is a literature discussion, I believe. Uh, we've got just some independent work. You see them working on math whiteboards in this one here. Um, Mr. Rogers, one of our fourth grade teachers is doing a math lesson here and meeting and talking about how each of them solved it. And then the one on the right I liked because this was a social studies class I was in um, where they would kind of study a document, think about it a little bit themselves and then quickly get into a group of four or five kids and talk about their opinions and compare one another's um, conclusions they drew. So, and again, this is a nice example again um, just totally a candid shot I took, but you can see everybody looking at that speaker um, and really engaged in that. And then I saw that in all parts of the room, they went back to work um, with this new information, what they had learned, now what I hear from my peers, and I'm now going to take all that together and create my final response. So um, just another example of ways that we're having kids work throughout the day. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Ditus. Yes, and if you can't hear me again, definitely let me know. Um, so the special area classes, like I said earlier, they will be all throughout the school year, which was a little bit different than fourth grade. And if you're remote, a little bit different. So we're really excited for the students to be able to go to the art and music room and the gym. Um, so uh, Rogers follows a six day cycle, which will be different than this year. We're currently a weekly schedule. Um, so within that six day cycle, this is the breakdown of when they will have those specials. So art and music twice a week, um, PE three times a week, and then they will go to the library once a week, which will be um, new for all the students as well to go to the library um, where they can check out some books, but also get a classroom lesson by the librarian um, that relates to what they're learning within the classroom. Next, I'll be talking about some extracurricular opportunities that will be new to the fourth graders. Um, so very exciting, some band and orchestra and instrument lessons. I know through COVID it's been um, challenging to get these students able to play with all of the rules and regulations. Um, so many of them will be really excited at the start of next year to have these opportunities um, and hopefully chorus as well. Um, typically band and orchestra, um, they sometimes meet before school starts. Um, so around that 8, 10 time before school, um, where students are invited to come in early to have those practices. Some other extracurricular opportunities is intramurals. Um, that is also takes place before school and makerspace um, club, which happens during the school day. Um, and that is down in the library. Um, and it's a club for students to innovate and create problem solve together. Um, so really exciting opportunities that they haven't had this year that they're, you know, maybe don't aren't even aware of yet. Um, so moving on to some other clubs that can be offered. Here's a list of some, um, the clubs are, they are decided based off of student interest, um, you know, and how many students want to become involved in that. And I always tell them if there's something you're not interested in, then maybe you can start that club with a teacher and with some friends. Um, so in the past, these are some clubs that we have had, science club, builders club, working with the community and to give back, cultural club, art club, ice skating club that happens in the winter time, um, snow sports, um, where hopefully we'll have the bus be able to take them again to Bristol Mountain in this winter, yearbook club, and Odyssey of the Mind, which we have some pictures here of the right um, to show. So those will all be really exciting and things that I hope my 
newly fifth graders can get involved in. Um, some of these will start late September and students can be on the lookout for posters or the announcements. Um, and some of them are seasonally, as I said. So um, really easy to join. They can always join late if they don't um, hear about it right away in September. Um, so these are really exciting opportunities for them. Ms. Dice, if I can just piggyback on that. Um, this, when you would look at these two things, it makes me think back to that building community um, mm -hmm. slide that I started with. And these are those extras that really help kids connect with one another or uh, a teacher with a common interest. So the top one is some of our Odyssey of the Mind students. Um, and these kids, many of them have been together now two years. Um, and sometimes they'll stay together for years and years when they're on Odyssey of the team. Um, and then the one down below is our um, Builders Club. And I'm pretty sure what they're holding are the pet supplies. And that again came from student interest. So their student voice and choice. It's the first time we've ever collected pet supplies, but it came from that group, um, passion for animals and passion to help the community. So um, just some really neat um, examples of kids um, showing, you know, they, they are part of our community and feeling really strong about that. So that's a little source of pride for us as well. <laughs> Thank you. And of course, hopefully getting back to some of our special events that all the students look forward to so much. Um, so here are some examples, um, the PTSA events that take place, um, the roller skating parties typically happen three times a year um, that students really look forward to and just those assemblies um, in the gym that they miss probably from their elementary schools to be able to go to. Um, spirit days that typically take place and also our kindness week in January. Um, those are all things that we'll be able to make a little bit more special than we were this year. Um, and lastly, the trade fair, which the fifth graders do at the end of the year. Um, so some of your students might be able to speak on that now um, as they're viewing the fifth graders trade fair and Shark Tank projects where they innovate um, a project and make it kind of come to life and able to vote and present on um, their ideas and objects. So these are all really special events that we're going to be happy to get back to and able to share with them. I'm going to talk briefly about um, just the counseling department and my role in helping the students transition to fifth grade, because um, I know some of them can have some worries about it as students and as parents. So my role is to help ease any concerns that you may have ahead of time. So my role um, with the transition, um, this whole week, um, I've been doing classroom lessons with the fourth graders. So I've been bringing fifth graders into the classroom to answer their questions. Um, which they've had really great insightful questions. If I haven't gotten to them yet, tomorrow will be their day. So they might already have some pre-information from this meeting, um, but I just wanna make sure to answer all of their questions and get ahead so they are, they're in the know. Um, and we will be looking forward to inviting the families um, late August to hopefully come and tour, um, find out where their classroom is. Um, so be on the lookout for some summer information in August um, to be able to come in and see. And I know I have some remote families on here as well who have never been to Rogers before. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing something special for them um, and come in and see the school, just my remote students too. Um, some classroom lessons that will be taking place next year. Some of these I have done this year, but they'll be built upon into the fifth grade as um, just their thinking and collaboration becomes a little bit more complex. Um, so growth mindset, safety, kindness, um, the think strategies, resilience, um, social media, that was new this year that I started doing a lesson on and will continue um, and how to use social media within the community and in our school next year, um, peer conflict and resolution. Um, so those are all um, classroom lessons that I will be looking forward to doing. And as always, I take teacher and student suggestions on what they want to learn about um, going into fifth grade um, as the times are changing. So are our lesson ideas. So those are some things to be on the lookout as well. And I believe, yes, that wraps up our presentation. Um, so I will stop sharing my screen so we can answer any questions that have evolved. But thank you all for the time um, and listening to everything that's exciting coming to the fifth graders for next year.
Thank you, Ms. Ditus. Thank you, Mrs. Bajardi. I appreciate that. Mrs. Bajardi, is there any closing comments you would like to make? Put you right on the spot here. <laughs> oh, I don't mind. Um, one thing I was thinking as we were talking is that summer reading piece too. So Ms. Flood talk, touched on still building that capacity and that mathematical thinking. I'm going to plug the reading over the summer too. Um, I do know that around the Public Library is doing some cool programs with some incentives and some special events happening. I know there's an author um, coming to speak who's actually a local author, so that could be a fun activity to do. So check out their programming and also other Monroe County libraries. I know have some great stuff um, and just getting them reading anything that interests them in any modality. If it's on an e-reader, on their computer, um, there are still some, the Sora and some other things we have through our library are gonna be available over the summer. So please feel free to access those um, and contact anyone at school if you have any questions about that. But I would definitely keep that reading and keep that stamina going because they will need it when they're going into the beginning of the school year. Great point. Thanks, Ms. Bajardi. Yeah. Um, and somebody did ask a question in the chat. Feel free to answer, ask them there, or you can just kind of raise your hand if you can find that little icon here um, and navigate Zoom. Uh, yes, we will. We are recording this. So what we'll do is we'll um, transfer it over to a, a um, stream, and then I'll ask the district to put it up on our, what they call our YouTube channel. Send me a link, and I will get that out to you. Um, most likely, to be probably by Monday, we'll get that out. Uh, we'll probably also include the regular PowerPoints for, for people who have been for, through uh, fifth and sixth grade before. They might just click through that to check on that. Um, so yes, we will definitely send that out. Um, we've got Ms. Briscoe asking about locks on their lockers. Yes, great question. That is another. So now we've got math facts, uh, reading, <laughs> and practicing how to do a combination lock. That is a great question. Um, that is causes a lot of angst, typically, um, for children. So if you can teach them that right, left, right method, of a combination lock if you happen to have any sitting around uh, your house. Um, we recommend that. We will give them a lock though. Um, so they will use a school issued locker uh, or lock and locker. Um, but if they know how to do it, it just helps them. Now, of course, if they don't, it's okay. Typically we teach that in fourth grade, but the teachers will know we've got to work on that next year. Um, so we will have a lock and a locker again and um, children down the road can decorate their locker if they want on the inside. Um, and that's usually an excited. I saw one of our little kids there just uh, was excited to hear that. So um, we do expect that um, and hope that that's going to be the case. Great question. Thank you for that. So now there's three assignments for the summer. <laughs> Another question that popped up was how do we get started with band as if they were fully remote, um, but they were assigned an instrument at the end of third grade. So I, be I believe they still have the opportunity to get involved in band. Um, we can either, myself, I can work with Mrs. Doy or Ms. Jesnek, depending on the instrument um, that the student is looking to get involved in. Um, but we can put it on their alert before the start of next school year um, to have that student be a part of it. So still time to join, not too late. Yeah, and that's, a, that's another good question. Thank you for asking that. And that was a question last night at our 3 go 4 meeting. Um, and I actually had to look that one up because I did not know. So I will follow up with, um, as Ms. Dita said, our band and orchestra teacher, and we'll include that on that email we'll send to um, the Blackboard. So it'll have the link and we'll just put that information in if you haven't had a chance to join music. Um, they were holding because of course they don't know all that they'll be able to do either yet, um, but whatever they can share with us, we will put in that email to you. Thank you for that question. And if you want, anybody else can either reveal and uh, put their hand up or you can just um, ask your question. Anyone else? Okay. Well, we always, oops, somebody's got one. Oh, it's just me. Oh. <laughs> so you guys are an easy group. Come on, you can challenge okay. us. Looks like there's a new one popping in there. Is age appropriate health education offered in fifth grade? Um, Go ahead. So I was gonna say, I know PEs looked a little bit different this year due to the COVID regulations. And again, we will not know what PE will look like next year, um, but PE is um, in Western Onoquay, it's to be able to um, gauge all students' abilities and it's not graded um, based on how well you do something, but the effort um, put into it. So PE is definitely age appropriate um, reflected in the curriculum. And, and actually, the, for the health curriculum, that does get picked up some by PE and some by science. So yes, we do that. Um, and it also continues into fifth grade. So 
Um, a famous lesson that's happening right today and tomorrow. Mrs. Bajardi's nodding her head and her eyes just got big. There is a puberty <laughs> lesson um, that the science teachers or the phys ed teacher will teach the children. Um, so I'm not sure if that was, you know, where the question, but we do address that. Um, a letter will come home before um, letting families know that that is coming and the general content that will be provided to kids. Um, but that does start in fifth grade and then continues really in sixth grade about healthy choices. It will look at tobacco um, and, you know, vaping and those type of things. So we really try to um, make sure we're doing that from a science lens and the PE class lens. Um, we've got another question about uh, opportunity for tutoring after school. Um, typically, it's just as a as needed basis as children are being helped by their teachers. We don't have a program, although I do have to say that's something we are always talking about. Um, and there is some extra funding coming this year. So we are looking at what could we also do to support children who need that extra boost. So right now I'm gonna say no, but it, it's a possibility that something like that is coming. Um, those who need intervention for either math or ELA though, we will be able to, we anticipate doing that more this year. Um, we typically put children in, in tiers depending on their needs. Um, and this year we were able to provide tier three, that was our most intensive service. Um, to children. In tier two, we just didn't have the ability to pull in mixed cohorts, um, but we do expect that to come back. So children may be um, having uh, intervention teacher pushing into their classroom to provide support, or in some cases, children will come out to get some individualized or small group instruction. Um, so we have that throughout the day. And then again, it's um, some teachers will be offering types of things like that after school and um, no school-wide program yet, um, but it could be coming. Um, we're hopeful of that. Uh, there are buses still, yes, so I, I hope I don't misspeak here. Um, we do have busing available, and I believe it's 1.5 miles at this age. Um, Ms. Ditas, do you know, or is it two? Um, I know, I think you're, I think you're right with 1.5. Yep, so not all children qualify for bus. All K3 children, of course, you knew that did, um, but you have to be a certain distance in four through six, and then um, it's even a, a greater distance in Dake. So some are bust and, and some will continue to walk, get dropped off um, or, you know, um, take their bikes or scooters, all that stuff that's going on there. Mm -hmm. And I thought I saw one other one. I think we got them. Great questions, everyone. Thank you for those. And so um, if, you, if you've had your um, information and you've had any questions you had answered, um, we just want to thank you for your time tonight. Again, we adore your children and we've learned tons from them and they energize us. Um, and we thank you for your support being here tonight as well as all your um, support this year. And we look forward to um, two more years with you um, and your students. So um, we offer you good night. If you'd like to stay on with questions, we see a couple more popping in. We will be here. Oh, they're all thank yous, aren't you kind? <laughs> thank you for those. But if you wanna stay on, uh, feel free and otherwise enjoy the rest of your evening and have a great care. summer. Bye, Sophia. No. <laughs> <laughs>